Okay, so uh, here's our young learner, Sammy. And she knows that before we start using uh, different tools for teaching online and thinking about the way that we're going to uh, manage our class, the most important thing that we need to do is think about the type of information that we're communicating to our students and what they actually need to know. So we're going to think about the spectrum of behaviorism to, to cognitivism, and then ending with constructivism. So what are those three things? First of all, behaviorism is the most sort of uh, common. It, behaviorism is what people think about when they think about learning, typically. It's um, stimulus response. So for example, I give my students a list of dates if they're in a history class they need to know um, when world war ii what year world war ii started what year world war ii finished what year barack obama became the president of the united yeah. states and then on the exam basically the questions are what year did barack obama become the president of the united states the student has to select an answer from some options or they have to be able to tell me that it was 2007 he was elected in 2007 became president in 2008 uh, the, the, the important thing about behaviorism is that we don't really care what's happening in the students' brains. We just want them to give us the answer that is the pre-programmed answer. So it's um, easy to teach and it's easy to test. Next, we move on to uh, cognitivism. And cognitivism is basically like behaviorism, but with one important difference, which is we, we have more, we care a little bit more about what's happening in our students' brains, right? So what's happening, what's happening in, in here? What's happening in there? And uh, the, a good example of cognitivism is algebra, right? We give our students algebra problems and we want them to tell us the answer. We want them to solve for x. So this could be just stimulus response. 2x plus 2 equals y solved for x. You know, whatever. That was terrible algebra, by the way. And we... We want them to show us, in addition to the correct answer, we want them to show us the steps. So we want them to, you know, write the, write the equation and then have step one, step two, step three, and then the correct answer. So we do care that in their mind they have the process and they understand the logic. The final and the more complex but probably the most uh, important for students is uh, constructivism. And constructivism is the most different from the other two options. And the main reason for that is that constructivism takes the idea that our students learn through interpreting the world around them. Um, so, they thank you, Sammy. They construct knowledge, they don't acquire knowledge. Everything for them is subjective and everything is contextual. So the best, or not the best, a good example of constructivism is if you give your students uh, an essay and you want them to, um, you know, uh, propose the solution to a problem, they're going to give you solutions that you're not expecting and they're going to use vocabulary that you're not expecting and grammar that you're not expecting. But you're not going to um, give them negative points for using grammar and vocabulary that you didn't expect. What you're going to do is give them feedback about how effective their essay is. And this makes it more difficult for um, uh, using it a tool because everything is subjective. But for the students learning, it's probably a much more powerful tool. Uh, so what you should do now is think a little bit about the content of your course and decide which content is behavioristic, which content is uh, cognitivistic, and which is constructivistic. Because there, you know, you, it's very unusual to have one course that only uh, has information that falls into one of those three categories. You'll probably use two, maybe even three of those categories. So. Take a look at your course content.
decide where it falls on that spectrum. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, oh,